it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. We're the uh, YouTube channel that works with sheet metal. We don't use Sawzall. We don't use Bondo. We take a piece of flat metal and make it into anything we want to. And if you stay tuned, you'll be able to figure out how we do it. So we've had five installments on this Porsche 550 dash already. These started out as flat blanks of metal. And you can see it's starting to look like a 550 Porsche dash right now. It's not done, but what we have done is we've put in all the, uh, the major features. And now the next step is to tune it up and find out where our little uh, problems are and get those problems solved. And how do you do that? You do that by observation of the flexible shape pattern. You do it by observation of the gauges and you do it by observation and by comparison of the one that we're copying which was made by Bruce Kimmons in Arizona this is a replica he did a absolutely perfect job it's just as good as it gets and uh, we've got that to tell us where our mistakes are and if we look closely at this this is a nice little complicated little feature right here where this all intersects, you've got a valley coming here and you've got this uh, tapered radius uh, flowing into this valley and then you've got the instrument cluster hump. And as you can see here, that valley is coming down, but I got a fat spot right there. That's going to need to be shrunk. So we're going to heat shrink that and bring that down. And it looks like we probably have to bring up this little corner right here shrink that some but bring behind it up a little and then over on this side we got a problem too is that when we first plotted uh, there was a mistake in the flexible shape pattern and I found it by putting it back on there that the line was wrong the line was going over here and this is actually the valley line so I had to move the valley line over to here so I've got to pump this up a little bit I got to pump that up a little bit and if we put some of the gauges on here, we can see where we're at. Uh, this gauge defines how this uh, hump relates to the front section of the dash. And you can see we're pretty close. We're not that far off. There's a little bit of mistake there we've got to fix. And this one, number 33, is this right here. And you can see that's got to come way up, but that's done by bending. So if that goes down, this comes up. So we've got to fix this spot. We've got to bend that. We've got to fix this spot. And then if you look at, we'll take this and clip it here. If we look at this spot right here, see how it's rounded right there? Well, if we look at the other dash, it's not rounded at all there. And what that tells me, and my flexible shape pattern will tell me that too, is this has to be stretched a little bit more and uh, we've stretched it by beating it and then wheeling it but I think I might use the shrinker stretcher on there right now it's where I use the shrinker stretcher I don't use a shrinker stretcher to actually make panels I just use it to uh, tune flanges and it's an easy tune there I'll be able to put that stretcher die in there and you'll see this this has a hump right here that hump will disappear because this flange gets longer and we've got some surface quality issues that have to be dealt with but we'll deal with that later what we're trying to focus on now is to get all the gauges that are to a point of being close and um, they're they're not too bad right now but we're going to make them closer and dial them in until they are right on the money. So we've got a few things to do. I probably put the stretcher on here first and see if we can get that to come down. And then I'm gonna shrink this with the torch. So I'll concentrate on this little corner here and then we'll move over to this corner and see if we can fix that. So let's get a good look at it. You can see there's a little bump right here. And we're gonna put this flange in the shrinker stretcher and the neat thing about these dies is they have reliefs on them so they can accommodate going right in on that flange. And you can't bump always right at the same spot. You have to move it around. 
And most of the uh, stretching has to take place right on this edge. And you, you, you put your fingers like this, it represents exactly what has to happen. This is the neutral point right here in the center of this radius. So you have to go all the way from here to the neutral point, but it's very little that happens at the neutral point. It's mostly right here. So we're going to give it a couple bumps down at the uh, edge of the flange, and then I'll, we'll work our way in a little bit. If we, we're too aggressive, um, especially with like a, a Lancaster shrinker on stretching an edge, you'll break it. This is a, an Urco die. It's my machine. Uh, but uh, it's pretty forgiving because it has the Urco dies have stipple in them versus the file cut that's on the the other Lancaster or Harbor Freight type machines that a lot of people have. So I just keep bumping around over here, and that should have helped it out quite a bit. Yeah, that's better, but not not perfect yet. So I might not do the whole thing here because I got to do that shrinking over here and that might have an effect on it. So I got to do the heat shrinking. All right, I don't want to go any further because I don't want to bust that right there. If I break it, you got to weld it and it's a pain. So now I'm going to take the acetylene torch, heat this up, and then I'm going to use this hammer here. And I've got uh, my little... Uh, shot bag right behind it and I'm, I'm going to work that down with heat like that and you'll see that valley forming and uh, that should help things out quite a bit. So I got to get the torch set up and then a little water to cool it and some paper towels. This is a mystery of life. I can't figure out why when you turn an acetylene torch on and you add the oxygen it, it flames out the first time, maybe the second time, maybe the third time. After that, it's fine. I don't know, maybe it's the heat of the torch or something. Okay, nope, flamed out again. Maybe somebody can give me a comment on that. I've never been able to figure this one out. It should be good now. Nope, flamed out again. All right. Yeah, third time. Usually the second or third time I usually get it. All right, so we're going to heat this up. Remember, metal is clay. It's got the same characteristics. Clay, you have to heat it up to make it move. You've got to heat metal up to make it move the way you want it to. Um, with clay, you can move it with your fingers. You've got, you heat it up to your, your room temperature, or, no, but, well, body temperature by running it in your hand. So that's 98.6. This melts at like 1250 degree Fahrenheit. It anneals at 750 Fahrenheit, but it'll start to get more malleable at two or 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we, we don't have a way of, of, of determining how hot we are, but uh, by practicing, if you're too hot, you're just gonna melt it away. So you gotta be careful. And aluminum uh, also goes into a uh, crystalline stage at some point. I don't know what temperature it is, but it might be 1100 or something. And it just kind of shatters. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to make a, a, a bad boo-boo there. So we're just going to heat it up a little bit and see if we get any action on that. And we're going to do it slow and incremental. Cool it off. Wipe it with the paper towel. We'll do it again. We might have to do this five or six times. I don't know if we'll film the whole thing, but. We gotta get that to go down. see it's starting to go down. This is a door skinning hammer 
that I've just dressed with uh, one of my uh, Hobbit Freight little six inch grinders with a soft pad and it does a really nice job. You bring it up to 400. I put a radius going this way and a radius going that way. I think they were sort of flat when you first buy them. No, this, this one, uh, I, didn't, I think this is a Fairmont. I don't know if I mentioned that was a Hobbit Freight. I don't think it was the Hobbit Freight grinder I was mentioning. All right, so we're making some progress there. We'll cool it again and then hit it with the heat again. You can't be in a hurry with this stuff. It, uh, it moves at its own little pace. We'll heat it up again. I don't want to get too hot. See that transformation, that valley is starting to form there. So now we can put the flexible shape pattern on there and see if it flows a little bit better. It still needs to come down a bunch, but we should should see should see some improvement now. Now I, I labeled all the uh, indexing uh, in, of the gauges and everything here, so we've got this marked really nice now. So. That's coming pretty good. This is laying nicer now. That's pretty good. I might have to pump this corner out. You can see there's a little um, space in there implying that that has to go this way. So I'm going to have to put that on the bag and take a Delrin tool. I like the Delrin tools because they don't uh, tend to uh, crack or, or mock uh, the, the, the aluminum, whereas the steel will. In this case here, I have to use the steel hammer because I've got a hot surface and I can't use the delrin. The delrin will melt. So we'll clean this up a little bit. I got a little nub right there I got to clean up. It's still got to go down a little bit more, but it's a lot better already. Get a little heat in his general area. That should do it. And this flange has to come around some more too. Now, um, I'm going to have to hit that back. I just hit that down right there, but if you look over here, you see that that actually comes this way. So I'm going to have to hit it the other way back again to, to define that valley a little bit better. But I still want to shrink some more out of here. This is, I think, still a little tall right there. So we'll cool that again, and we start to cycle over again. I noticed that when apparently when I cut this out, I left a little what's called a fish hook. A fish hook is when you go in with the shear and then back off and then go again and it leaves this little uh, fish hook essentially. It's just like a fish hook. So it, it'll, it'll start to crack from there and it looks like I got a little bit of crack formation right here. Now I have this much extra material here so I'm, I'm within uh, safe distances so I can cut that off. So I'm just going to trim that out because it's easier just to trim it out. Otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to crack and it'll just keep walking in there and you'll have to weld it up. Which is not the end of the world, but let's just stop the crack from forming by uh, cutting it out. And we'll sand it with 80 paper. These are my little specialty cutters that will cut around curves and stuff real easy. And what they are is just regular cutters, but these are, these are special ones made by um, the shears, but I put the handles on them and then I cut them off. So it allows you to turn the corner really quick. I don't use them that much anymore because I use that cordless shear all the time, but it comes in handy to do something like that. 
So lo and behold, I left another fish hook there. I better get uh, the grinder and just grind that a little bit and then I'll sand it. So let me grind it and sand it and we'll get back to what we were doing. All right, so I got that fish hook done, dealt, with, dealt with and uh, we shouldn't have any cracking problem. And now what I'm gonna think I'm doing is I'm going to make that return. See, I don't have that return yet there. So I'm gonna see if I can take that same hammer and somehow manipulate this around here. Okay, that will work right there. And I don't think I need any heat for that. So. Take a good look at it. I got a radius hammer here. I found that in an antique store out in Western Mass. It was a standard Pexto uh, just a dull hammer. So I put a nice radius on it here and put a nice radius on the, the round end and a radius on the square end. So now it's a special purpose hammer. So it works pretty good. And you know, you, you saw me using the uh, stretcher over here and the stretcher makes it convenient to go in there. But you can also do that by taking and putting against an immovable object, like I have my steel plate, and you put that there, and then I've got another one. Let me see, this one. This one I put a radius in too. And let's see, if we put that, say that was a steel plate. Yeah, we could hammer that. Or actually, I guess this one would work better. So the object would be to do most of your stretching or impacting on that edge and that will stretch that edge out just like it would with the uh, the shrink of stretcher. Now you can also put that in a planishing hammer and planish that and that will stretch that edge too. So there's always three or four ways to, to solve every problem. Um, and, and you can choose, you know, some of them might work a little bit better than the other but you can get it done. So you don't need a, a a tremendous amount of tools you need the correct techniques to make this metal do what you want it to do everybody falls back and say oh if I only had the tools it's not the tools it's the technique and then they go well if I had the tools it's so much faster there's no such thing as being faster in this work it's slow all the time now uh, anybody that was in the coach building business from 1900 to say 1970 they had a business but it wasn't a business that they could blow up like Amazon and everything most of them went bankrupt so it's very difficult to make money hand building a car it can be done you have to find the right person to purchase the car at a price that's agreeable uh, or build it and then sell it at, a, at, a, at an auction or something uh, but there's a tremendous amount of satisfaction in building these things. So that's the appeal of it. And there's a potential for, for, for making a profit on the car too if you, if you get all your stars to align properly. So we, re we, we hit that back and we got the return started. It's still a little fat right in here. So we're going to try to shrink that a little bit more. And how long does this take? It, when it's done, that's when it's done. So we'll heat that up and we'll see if we can get that valley to get a little deeper right in here. Now this is where the hammer form, if you have a hammer form, it's such a no-brainer to be able to put this on the hammer form and just hit it into that valley. You can heat the panel up and, and whatever, depending on what the hammer form is made out of. Or you can anneal it. And it's so much easier than trying to uh, diagnose all this surface information using the gauges and the flexible shape patterns or a buck of some sort or just close observation. Uh, the, the, the hammer form is, it's there, it's the male die, and this is the female part of it by just hitting the independent, uh, or the in, in, in independent hammer blows that will add up to uh, completing what the female die would do if you had a match set. I'm going to 
try to shape that a little bit in there. I'll come over here. Bring this bag over. And you can never have enough beater bags. Those beater bags just come in so handy. So now let's do a visual of that little section right there. All right, still a, a, right there, I see a little peak. It's a little fat right in there. So we're gonna heat that up and shrink it a little bit more right there. And this battle only ends when you're really happy with what it looks like. You just keep going at it until it's done. Something like this might take a half an hour, might take an hour to do, you never know. Whereas with a hammer form, it's a maybe a 30 second job. But a hammer form implies you've got to invest a lot of time to make that tooling. So that's looking pretty good. I'm liking it. Now I need to, there's a gauge here. Let's see. I thought I had all my gauges over here. Did you move them? No, I know, but I thought I put them over here. Let's see. That is 25. Look at that. There's gauge number 25. It's looking pretty good, except for one thing. This index mark is this way a little bit, which implies that that has to go this way some. So I've got to knock that down a little bit. So we put that, get the torch out of the way here. We put this back over here. This one. Hit that a little bit and see what happened. Now we're getting really pretty close there, pretty close. A little bit more right on that tip and we're there. So we're lining up now with the gauge index, and that's looking a lot better. Um, it's a little fat right here. I'm gonna shrink it again right there a little bit. And this needs to come this way a little bit, but this flange is looking good. I'm a little fat up here. I can probably shrink that down too. So we can put this against the wood. Let me, let me heat this up right here and see if we can bring that down a little bit. So this is the finessing. And a lot of this is all handwork. The English wheel, the power hammer and all that is really not going to help you out too much. It's looking a little better. Maybe a little bit more over in here. We'll heat it some more. Mm, 
I like that. That's looking better. Let's put our gauge back on there, gauge number 25. We might have affected it somewhat. Okay, we opened up this, so we got to send that back again. So maybe I'll heat that up a little bit and it'll move a little easier. A torch is an absolute necessity working with sheet metal. I mean, you can gas weld stuff too. It works really good. The people that are proficient at gas welding, uh, it's just absolutely amazing how fast they can do it and how good it is. But it's a tough little skill set to learn. And I actually prefer TIGging to gas welding. But I need the torch to manipulate this metal. Five back on there again and it's pretty close. I still need to stretch this a little bit though. I still see a little bit of rise right there and I still need to shrink right there. It's a little fat right there so let's go after that. It's going to be a battle. It'll yield but it doesn't happen in minutes. The people that are uh, uh, sawzall oriented and bondo oriented probably already tuned out, usually about four or five minutes in. So only the hardcore people that really want to learn how to do this stuff are still watching. Those are the people that we're actually making the video for. There's a lot of other guys that know how to do it in a different way and they'll roll their eyes and say, oh no, that's all wrong. That's all wrong. You can do that. But there's always four ways at least to do every task. And this is one of them. Gonna come up with this here again. On this side, you can see that that there's that radius right there. That's the valley, and you can see that makes a really strong transition right there. Maybe that needs to be a little softer. Let's look at this from underneath to see how that transition looks like under there. Well, you can see um, Bruce Kimmins, who made this panel, he came up here into the middle of this to make that radius value and he's got a gas weld right here and you can see on the back he had low spots so he's used a either a, um, a pick hammer or a um, what do they call that bullseye pick to, to fatten up the top surface a little bit so his bottom surface has got a lot of evidence of using a pick hammer which is something I generally don't do but the radius value, if you can see in there, Mark can show that radius value. That looks like about uh, bigger than a quarter, maybe not as big as a half a dollar. But when we look in at ours, this one's a lot tighter. So I've got to open that up some. I've got to hit that. I've got to hit that so that it... Uh, is the same look. Let's see, how am I gonna do that though? I gotta hit this back this way still. It's a beautiful little transition, the way all that stuff comes together right there. And it's gotta be right. We don't make it out of Bondo, we make it out of metal.
And then uh, we'll also, we have the flexible shape pattern. We'll put the flexible shape pattern and see how this uh, little transition area is looking. What does it say? The flexible shape pattern will give you so much information. So it's starting to look pretty good. Right, it's actually saying that I'm low right here, that I got to come up this way. So maybe I got to hit it back this way, according to this. So let's try that. I've got a little low spot right in there. So maybe I got it deep enough. Maybe I got to just hit it back this way now. We might not get much done in this video, but um, there's a lot happening here. This is this is the uh, the beautiful little spot. These two little spots right here, and they got to be right. This is what you you just sit in the car. You're going to be looking at this dash. This is a focus of your attention, and uh, you want that to look proper. So we're going to spend the time and get it right. So I heated that up nice. I got this round again. I'm going to soften this edge right here. You can see that's got a nice smooth radius. I've got a sharp radius right here. I'm going to heat it at the torch a little bit and soften that up a little.
All right, that's looking a lot better. Maybe pound this back a little bit. It might have went a little too much right there. Metal is clay. You saw it. It worked all in into where it needed to be. We got it almost there. And I'm, I don't think I'm going to go any further. I can, I can chase this a little bit more, but I, I think people will get bored. So we probably got it about 90-something percent of where it needs to be. But to get it to 100 percent might be another 30 minutes or something. Or more. Plus it's got to be smooth. We've got to planish this all. But uh, we've, got, we've got the general shape in there now. I think that flange has got to go back some because I think the index mark's not... Yeah, see, we're way off on our flange now here. <clears throat> so that has to go back more this way which is going to have an effect on this, so that's where it gets sometimes a little frustrating. You have to have the patience. So now, let's pop that flange back a little. We'll heat it again. It'll tend to stretch a little bit if we put a little heat into it. Because we had that gauge fitting really nicely. So we'll heat this up a little. We'll hit it with this one. This one tends to impact it a little stronger, and we might get a little stretch out of it. And it looks like we gotta shrink a little bit more there too. All right, let's see if that pulled that in. Yep, that's pretty close now. The radius looks good. How's our radius under there? That's looking a lot better. It might not be perfect yet, but before uh, everybody tunes out, let's move over to the other side. We got that pretty close now. We've still got a little bit of tweaking to do to it. And we'll see if we can get this a little bit better. So this side, we had the valley marked over here and then we found out that there was a flaw, and then, and then I've got to move this a little bit too. You can see I got the valley over here. I got to move that over a little. So let's pound this out up this way. So that's getting that valley more where it's supposed to be. Let's give it a little bit more here. And let's see what the flexible shape pattern says about that. This is all fitting pretty nice now over here. I do have to pound this out a little bit over here though. So let's check this. That's looking pretty good. And that's the extra material I have. Plus this has a round here that we're going to make a, uh, a 3 8 wire and we'll hammer form a, a, around that wire to make that nice beautiful radius right there. So this is looking better. It looks like, see, we still got to come up a, a, a major amount right there, right 
right in that corner, if we put that where it's supposed to be, that's got to pump up quite a bit right here. So let's take and hit that up. We can use this hammer here. And the gauge we have for that is number 33. Is 33. Gauge 33 is right here. You can see how far off we are. We've got this enormous gap here. That doesn't mean that it has to be stretched that much. That means it has to be stretched plus a knee, uh, 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 arranged rather. So let's let's bend it a little bit like that and that should have closed it up quite a bit let's see all right so we got we're down to about less a little less than an inch but let's uh stretch that out some more here just stretching it right on the edge See right here, we got a. You see, we got a hard point, and we might have to shrink that right there, because when this rolls in, it causes this little kink right here, which if we shrink that down, that'll allow that to, to go in. So let's see where we're at now. We're about uh, three quarters of an inch away here now. So let's uh, shrink this little kink. Shrink the kink. So we'll put some heat on that and then we'll knock that down. All right, we're gonna heat that up and then we'll knock it down a little. That took care of that, but it, it drove some of the material over here, so now i got to shrink that where it goes into that little plane. It's a curved plane there. Adjacent area. Heat that up. Metal is clay. When you warm it up, you can do what you want with it. All right, so we're really close on this one. We're getting closer on this one. Let's uh, wheel this a little bit and get that smoothed out, and then we'll pound it out again. We gotta get that fitting really good right there. But let's cool it off and check it with the flexible shape pad and make sure we're doing the right thing because the ultimate truth is always the flexible shape pad. The flexible shape pattern does not lie. So you got to home it back in there. And look at that, that's all kind of flowing pretty good now. I'm a little weak in here, so that means I got to pump this side up here a little bit but I still have to pump this out a little bit over here. So, um, let's smooth this up a little bit first because oftentimes when you get it really, uh, the, surf the surface all disturbed, it's very hard to get a good reading of it. So I'll, I'll hammer down all this, smooth this up, maybe get the wheel in here and smooth it, and, and then we'll take another assessment of where we're at. The, the goal is to get this Let's see if this is lined up properly. That's number 33. Okay, 33, that's pretty close because it, it end, it'll index at the end of the panel. So that, that roll right there is pretty close. So 
that's what we have to do is we've got to mate up with that. And you can see we're getting in the ballpark now. So let's go over to the little English wheel. We'll smooth that out a little bit and then do an assessment of where we're at. All right, we're over here on the little English wheel. We're just going to planish this out a little bit, nothing fancy. And, but this is where that little English wheel really starts. You can get into this little stuff nice. And this can be done all with a hammer and dolly, too. But I prefer the English wheel. So we'll stretch it a little bit on the English wheel here, too. Let's see, we'll tighten that up a little bit. We'll work on the edge, and that will stretch that edge up a little bit more. I can pull down on it too and that'll set the arrangement. And let's see if I can get this little section here. It's kind of beat up from the hammers a little bit. So I planished that out. So let's see what we got now. Getting closer. And you can see this other sections of this dash as well. We're going to make this in one piece up to here. This is a very simple little piece. The, the actual face of the uh, instruments, that's a flat panel with some flanges on it. And this little underling piece here is not that difficult either. But these two wing panels, the lower wing panels, they are definitely complicated little pieces. So um, they've got all these uh, radius values and stuff that we have to, we'll have to mark them a little bit better here. We, we should have uh, the beginning of the radius, the center of the radius, and the end of the radius to define the tapered part of that radius. It's just an unbelievably beautiful design. And Erwin Commender designed this, and they didn't have CAD back then, so this was all done old school uh, mechanical drawing techniques. Lots of drawings, lots of cross section uh, to, to get all these radiuses proper here. So, we're getting closer, and that's laying down pretty nice over here, but you see that? When I put that like that, it still wants to come up over there, and we have a little, we have this phenomenon of this twist, see? So that edge has to actually pop up way over here. So I gotta beat the, the hell out of that. But we're getting a little long in the, uh, the length here of the video. It's going to probably be a disappointment because I didn't get too much done, but those little details are very significant. They're the focal point of this dashboard. So we want to make sure we get everything just right. We're not going to cut any corners. No job for a sawzall or a bondo. We don't use MIG welders either. No, not on this stuff. It's all TIG welded. If you want, you can gas weld it. 33, what happened to 33? Right here. All right, so still has to go considerably. But we're getting there. I'm gonna pop that around. 
Yeah, like that. Let's see what that did. Alright. It needs it more right in here. Remember we were, we were almost uh, seven eighths or an inch or so. Now we're down to about three eighths of an inch here. So we're on the road to success. Look at that. All right, so when we brought that up, we've got a little kink forming again here. So that means it's a little strong right here once we get that to where it needs to be. So we'll have to heat shrink that back, back where it needs to be. And there's a little low spot right in here too. Well, I'm off the, see the valley went off right there. So I gotta bring that valley over. So let's see if we can uh, fix that a little bit. Well, that's a lot better. All right, well, it's getting late. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. It wasn't wasn't much we're just dealing with these little spots but it's those little uh, spots that sometimes can take a lot of time the rest of the acreage is very easy those little spots are the little troublesome ones and as I mentioned before if we had a hammer form it's only a matter of minutes to fix that so we got them close they're not hundred percent yet There'll be another video. This, I believe, is number six. So Mark will put this up, and it'll be up for tomorrow. That'll be uh, Thursday, the 25th. And uh, we'll continue on this. So we, we might do another episode uh, Thursday. Maybe we'll get two episodes this week. We'll see how the day goes. And uh, I'm very happy with what happened. We're getting a lot closer on these points. We'll be able to have this so we can mate this up pretty quick. And uh, we might not 100% finish these right away. We might jump into these other pieces, get these up to about where these are, and then do the finessing on all four or five, six pieces, and then start welding it together. We use the flexible shape pattern to guide us to weld it together to make sure that we have uh, all the distances, the width and the, the length and everything all the same. The flexible shape pattern will tell you every bit of that. So, thanks for watching. Remember, metal is clay. And please uh, subscribe, hit that notification button, give us the likes, and we always like the comments. I try to answer as many as I can. Thanks for watching. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop.